Next, a look at efforts to promote Islam as a religion of peace and what's being done to combat extremist radical ideology. Held by the Washington Institute for Near East Peace, this is a little more than an hour. Good evening, everyone. I am Shelley Kasson, president of the Washington Institute. Thank you. Let me begin by thanking my good friend Marty Gross for his outstanding service as president and then chairman of the Institute. And by that's where the platform is. And by congratulating Jim Schreiber on his election as our new chairman. I am sure that we will be going from strength to strength. Five months ago, I was fortunate to join with 50 of my fellow trustees on a Washington Institute study tour to the Gulf. We traveled first to Riyadh, Muscat, and Abu Dhabi. We saw countries in the midst of dramatic change, and we met with inspiring leaders and energized young people, women and men, at every stop. Of course, change happens in different ways, at a different pace, and in a different style than it might happen elsewhere. A similar group of Institute trustees visited Cairo in November 2010 just two months before the revolution that overthrew President Mubarak. That change was bottom-up, driven by the street. In Saudi Arabia, change is top-down, driven by a new generation of leadership. Will it have better, more lasting success? Time will tell. Does it matter to America? Absolutely. Most Americans got their first glimpse of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the engine of change in Saudi Arabia, in his 60 Minutes interview and during his cross-country tour just a few weeks ago. We, Lucky Institute trustees, were fortunate to have an early opportunity to hear him during our December visit. We had already checked out of our hotel, the Four Seasons, by the way, not the Ritz, <laughs> and met with the prince just before our departure. He had new, provocative ideas on just about everything, from how to confront Iran in the region to the potential relationship between Saudi Arabia and Israel. But what was most fascinating to us was his ideas on internal Saudi matters, and especially on the need for a more moderate Islam. For as long as I can remember, Saudi Arabia was synonymous with a harsh, extreme, intolerant form of Islam, a version of the faith Saudis exported around the world. To hear this Saudi leader talk about the need to change that mindset, to rid Saudi religious institutions of extremists, and to preach a more inclusive, tolerant form of Islam conjured up two words, cognitive dissonance. Still, we left hopeful. It is one thing to talk the talk. Tonight, our guest is responsible for walking the walk. His Excellency Mohammed Al Issa is the Secretary General of the Muslim World League. Founded in 1962 and based in Mecca, the League's mission is to promote Islamic values, teaching, and principles to Muslims around the world. It operates everywhere throughout the Middle East, throughout Asia, from Europe to America. The League's reach is wide, its influence deep. So the role of its leader is especially critical. Dr. Alisa was appointed to this position in August 2016. He previously served nearly seven years as Minister of Justice after rising through senior positions in the Islamic judicial system in Saudi Arabia. He holds undergraduate, master's, and doctoral degrees from Imam Muhammad bin Saud University in Riyadh. We met with Dr. Alisa during our visit to Riyadh and were deeply impressed with his commitment to interfaith outreach. 
our executive director, Rob Satloff, stayed in contact with him and in January had the idea to invite Dr. Alisa to issue a statement to the U.S. Holocaust Museum on, an, on International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Rob later wrote that at most he expected a brief, sterile reply. Instead, he received the boldest endorsement of the importance of Holocaust memory and, and the strongest condemnation of Holocaust denial ever issued by a Muslim religious figure of his rank and stature. Last week, Dr. Alisa acted on these words when he participated in a special ceremony at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in New York, where Rob interviewed him on the importance of Holocaust memory. Then, yesterday morning, he spent more than two hours touring the Holocaust Museum here in Washington. Those important steps, of course, are only a piece of a larger picture. The challenge of building a more tolerant and moderate Islam that is the focus of tonight's discussion. And there isn't anyone better equipped to engage with Dr. Alisa on this topic than Rob, who has spent so much of his career on the front lines of the effort to engage with Muslims on how to fight extremism and build a more tolerant and moderate Islam. May I ask for a warm welcome for our panel this evening. So friends, thank you very much. Before we begin, first, some instructions. You will find on your tables headsets for interpretation by our professional interpreters behind door number one and door number two back there. So the instructions to use these headsets are very simple. That's usually the precursor to, oh my God, where's my teenager to explain it to me? The instructions are very simple. Make sure they are plugged in. Okay. Once you're sure that the headphones are connected to the set, you press the one button on the front. That's the on-off button. I hope you're with me so far. Okay. Now, if you would like to hear our conversation in English, channel one. If you would like to hear our conversation in Arabic, channel two. If you would like to hear our conversation in another language, there's a bar on the second floor. <laughs> I'm sure you can find someone who'll do the translation for you. And when we are finished, because I'm told it is $300 per handset, when we are finished, please leave them on your table. Thank you. All right. Serious business. Just as a word at the outset. Um, I have gotten to know our guest, Dr. Muhammad Alisa, over the course of the past five months, and I am truly delighted that you, sir, you, sir, are here with us tonight. I'm delighted that I have been able to make this friendship with you. I'm delighted that you have responded so speedily and fully and generously to every request that I have ever made of you. I hope that after this conversation, you will still answer my emails. <laughs> but it's a very serious remark that at the very beginning, I want to extend my personal thanks to you. So thank you. So if we can just begin, uh, Dr. Mohammed, as you, you just heard, 
Yesterday, you visited the Holocaust Museum. Can I ask you what your reaction was to that visit? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, First, I would like to express at the outset of this meeting about my happiness to be among you and my happiness for this meeting, which uh, uh, brings many civilizations and cultures together and ideas towards uh, an understanding and uh, uh, coherence and, uh, in the, uh, the things that we agree about together, which is very important. And uh, we will always refer to the 10% of these uh, common ideas uh, uh, that uh, humanitarian ideas is capable of achieving uh, international peace and coherence. This uh, meeting, I am very happy uh, to be in this meeting, and I was very pleased and honored with the friendship that I established with Mr. Drove, who is one of the dearest uh, uh, friends in the area of uh, ideas and intellectual domain and political analysis. And there were uh, uh, exchanged uh, uh, ideas between us, uh, and I learned about the annual celebration of the Holocaust. And uh, he, my friend, Mr. Grob, uh, spoke to me about this uh, uh, incident and uh, remind, reminded me of the annual celebration of this occasion. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, this is a very uh, painful experience. We studied it in our uh, young days, and, and it, the, what we read was very justified, and we always looked at this issue uh, uh, through the document that uh, 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 it's a historical evidence, uh, and uh, uh, since we were very young, we had uh, a lot of uh, facts about this disaster, uh, the human disasters that threatened the uh, humanity with a, a lot of uh, shame, uh, and in fact, uh, this uh, uh, feeling continued, thus we cannot deny this uh, incident and uh, or, uh, reduce its importance. I wrote uh, a, a, a message that was mentioned by my friend to Miss Sara, the director of the Holocaust Museum, which uh, expresses my feeling. And this message uh, had a, a, a lot of re response in the Muslim world, responses from the people in the Muslim world, because our Islamic uh, institution, uh, which has a big influence all over the world, and the P uh, has a a big role in the Islamic world. Uh, we always start from uh, uh, facts, uh, and we do not take any uh, uh, anything that can affect uh, our objective opinions. Uh, this message was uh, uh, did not have any political factors. Uh, it was totally humanitarian, and it is uh, talks about a, an international humanitarian uh, problem. Uh, uh, many uh, uh, of the documents were used uh, that uh, discuss this uh, uh, tragedy, which uh, 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 and I can say that this incident was uh, did not have any uh, thing like it in uh, human history before. Uh, it, uh, 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 people, when they lose their morality, can become beasts, uh, uh, human beasts. Uh, uh, 
also when uh, there is the, the, uh, the that the uh, 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 disasters like this happen when we look at to the leaders who control the lives of people uh, or threatens the world uh, uh, they, came, they were people that uh, uh, ended up being leaders in their countries, but uh, uh, they did not have uh, 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 they, they, they came. We cannot say that these people had any uh, uh, ethics. Uh, they probably went uh, through psychological uh, uh, problems that uh, led them to uh, commit this uh, great uh, uh, inhumane uh, act. Uh, we believe, and I personally believe as a Muslim with, with this, uh, is that we must speak the truth and talk about this uh, in the name of our uh, 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 league, we spoke about the some of the details in this subject, and we have visited yesterday the Holocaust Museum, and we looked at more and more documents, historical documents, and I was very happy also that uh, that this museum has another uh, concern, human uh, concern, which sh shows. Uh, that uh, uh, human uh, values are very much uh, uh, taken into consideration in this, uh, to show the methods of uh, 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 killing people uh, and kids in Syria, and found also a concern uh, uh, that was printed and delivered to us about the, uh, what is happening in Myanmar, the uh, killing of people uh, based on their ethnic background. These are, uh, 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 we must appreciate these efforts. Uh, the humanity uh, is, uh, 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 should uh, be living in peace and and uh, we should have the values that our Creator wanted for us uh, uh, when we stop hate and make the uh, re, uh, the f facts uh, is our always open away from anything that can uh, make our consciousness uh, uh, speak uh, uh, incorrectly about what is happening. Thank you very much. Shukran uh, Gazila. So, if I could just ask you, in your letter to uh, the director of the Holocaust Museum, you wrote um, that the Holocaust was, quote, a horror that cannot be denied or underrated by any fair-minded or peace-loving person. And then you wrote, who in his right mind would accept, sympathize, or diminish the extent of this brutal crime. Based on these sentiments, what would you say to someone who suggests that the Jews killed during the Holocaust were themselves responsible for their own killing? What would you say to someone who suggests that somehow the Jews brought it on themselves. We, we always we are dealing always with this uh, disaster uh, through the it's a criminal description but to reduce uh, the importance of this disaster uh, using any excuses that could make us look away and not condemn this disaster is in my estimation is a contribution in uh, in uh, uh, to deny uh, the criminality of this incident, the, this human uh, crime, 
what uh, Hitler did in his Nazi uh, crime was an extension to, to his attempt to burn the entire world. Hitler was not an, at any time a, a calling for peace. He uh, raised the banner uh, of uh, uh, discrimination. Uh, he wanted only his own uh, type be in Germany. He believed that he is going to burn the entire world and, uh, on this uh, land. Hitler's life was ended and his crimes were stopped and the history registered these disasters for us and human dignity remained and history remained to talk about these disasters and crimes and we all benefit from it but some people do not want to remember this and to register these events and i always said that the behavior of hitler in this matter and, and uh, his self-praising and his uh, racism and the fact that he was a man without any values and his crimes that moved uh, humanity is, uh, reminds us with the crimes that uh, he committed uh, uh, we, when we listen to the uh, message of hate and racism, and if we uh, get away from describing the truth and the facts, we will deviate from uh, uh, the truth and uh, justice. Thank you very much. Um, Let's broaden the discussion, Dr. Uh, Mohammed. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has said he would like to return his country to an era of, quote, a moderate Islam, open to the world and open to all religions. So let us take a look at each half of this sentence. First, moderate Islam. There was a time when Muslim leaders would reject the very phrase moderate Islam, saying, there is no moderate Islam. There is only Islam. So what, in your view, is moderate Islam? And how does it differ from extremist Islam. That is a question for Islamic uh, intellectualism. We can say that, uh, that moderate Islam there are people that are extremists and raising the banner of moderate Islam and those who speak on behalf of Islam and they are uh, really not moderate. And there are also some who speak using uh, extremist uh, expressions and interpretations of the text. And I cannot say that this person is he is not from an Islamic environment. He is from an Islamic environment, but he talks about a, an Islam of his own. Islam that uh, kidnapped the reality of Islam through his uh, extremist ideas. The moderate Islam is the, is the real Islam. 
Uh, the moderate Islam is the uh, Islam of uh, coexistence between all people, that is tolerant toward all people. Uh, Islam, uh, moderate Islam is the Islam that believes in diversity and pluralism as a sunnah or a tradition. Uh, and this is actually uh, the nature of uh, 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 human creatures. Uh, the uh, real Islam believes in the rights of the whole people and cannot impose its own beliefs on others or uh, its ideas. The moderate Islam, Islam understands the differences and uh, diversity in religions and schools and ideas and cultures. Otherwise, uh, all people on this earth will think in the same way and have the same religion and the same culture. Islam in its uh, uh, essence is a moderate religion, and uh, the, that description is really the true description of Islam, but to use it for, to when anybody who raises the, the banner of Islam uh, while works against the principles of Islam, this is not a way for the Muslims. When, when we find the moderate Islam and, uh, and you use it for uh, 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 Islam through 1400 years, coexisted with everybody. But I would like to mention here that there are uh, people who try to falsify history. There are events that were written by some historians, which is not does not really belong to Islam. And you know that history are, is written by individuals and persons. And they uh, also uh, they, uh, they misinterpreted uh, Islamic history. history. History is not a, a text that is coming from the, uh, the God Almighty, uh, free of any falsification. Uh, however, we uh, uh, recall the uh, uh, verses in the Quran and the Islam, and I am a specialist in that, in the Islamic uh, law, and I, I studied all these texts, and I am a religious man, and I know the truth about these uh, texts and what goals they are aiming at. All these tech, Islamic texts respected all people, uh, uh, respected diverse, uh, uh, diversity. Uh, we have a text in Islam that said uh, there is no way, way you can force religion on anybody. And uh, in Islam also there is a text uh, from the Quran calls uh, for uh, tolerance and uh, to treat uh, Muslims and non-Muslims alike well. That is um, the real Islam. We cannot find extremists uh, uh, mentioning this text and they do not mention these texts. The God Almighty said, uh, uh, those who did not fight you in your religion and did not kick you out of your homes, uh, you must uh, uh, be just with them. Uh, God loves those who are just. In Islam, also mercy is very important. The Prophet Muhammad said, uh, I, I was sent you to uh, 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 complete the morality of the humanity. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, God have mercy in, uh, on his soul, lived in Mecca and Medina. They were people who uh, were uh, uh, Jewish of Jewish origin and people who do not have any religion and he coexisted with both of them. 
وهو رئيس they, الدولة الإسلامية. He was the head of the Islamic State. لو شاء لو وضع قصر. If he wanted, he could have established a palace with thousands of guards around himself. But he did not do that. He and his neighbors were Jews. And when he got sick, he visited them when they were sick. This is a fact. Uh, these are the facts. It's not a, a falsified history. He dealt with all people. He dealt with the Muslims and non-Muslims alike. He dealt particularly with the Jews. There were commercial relations between them. Uh, he died while his shield was actually uh, uh, with a Jewish family because he owed the money. Uh, when, هناك, when we have others uh, uh, facts mentioned by history that uh, is, that uh, show that uh, say that uh, Islam did not uh, coexist with other religions. Their Islam was never uh, with a position to uh, uh, reject the presence of any other religion. Not Christianity or Judaism or any other religion. It said those who kill the uh, non-Muslims living between Muslims, the Prophet Muhammad said who kills any of these people will never see heaven. Also, the Prophet one day was sitting and there was a funeral for a Jewish person. The Prophet stood up when the uh, funeral passed. He said, this is a human soul. We must uh, uh, respect it and give it the respect that it deserves. These are from uh, the, uh, our religious text. The Prophet uh, coexisted with all, loved all, and uh, was tolerant with all. And I would like to mention uh, these historical facts so that the truth about Islam would be understood. And and anything to the contrary does not really uh, uh, make, uh, give, uh, I mean, describe things truly, truthfully. Very good. So let me just ask, you just said, you just quoted a line from the Quran about not killing, about not killing people of other faiths. Can you say for us your view on the idea of targeting civilians, of suicide bombings against civilians? Are targeting, killing civilians ever acceptable under Islam? Islam has never been in any time <coughs> ever called to uh, take the first step in a fighting. It's never been an, an the offensive. There was never been a, a confrontation unless it was imposed on Islam. Islam was never uh, the, on the offense. And Islam incriminates the um, killing of civilians and those who should be safe within the society. Therefore, those suicidal attacks against civilians 
and who, those who are supposed to be safe, they are simply crimes. In the Islamic scriptures, they are considered crimes. I also, I would like to indicate that some of the interpretations uh, by uh, the uh, terrorism, terrorist uh, extremism, uh, they should be faced and confronted, and that actually the Islamic League uh, confronted those uh, ideologies, the extremist ones, and uh, these theories been dismantled because they are uh, very weak. However, they were able to extend and expand uh, 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 during the past few years because uh, uh, they were not uh, able to go through their ideology details and the Islamic League were able to confront um, and face these uh, ideologies because they're weak uh, and they, were, they have been dismantled, as they say, in the first round. No. And does your does your view on prohibiting uh, or criminalizing s attacks against innocent civilians apply everywhere, from Cairo to Tel Aviv to New York to Paris? I, I say generally, this is a general rule. Islam is incriminating, uh, attacking civilians anywhere on this earth. Thank you. Um, when we were chatting earlier, uh, you said to me, Rob, when there is peace, we will meet together in Jerusalem. No, I say, I say, I'll say that again. You say, when, when we were chatting over dinner, you said to me, Rob, when there is peace, we will meet in Jerusalem. I'm not going to ask you a political question. I have respect that the Muslim World League is a non-political organization. So I want to ask you a question about faith, about belief. If you and I will meet in Jerusalem, is that a mark of respect that Jews, Christians, and Muslims all recognize and are all legitimate in recognizing Jerusalem as a holy city? I think there is a project, uh, an Arab um, a project that is uh, presented to uh, solve uh, this issue from the, uh, uh, all aspects, uh, uh, and this uh, solution should be comprehensive and just. We all looking forward to see that solution, and it's very necessary, and I, uh, it is uh, just to all. Uh, once this solution happened, uh, we will go together to uh, bless this peace there. And we will look forward uh, for that to happen uh, soon. Everybody looks forward to it. Uh, and it will be comprehensive peace that will give everybody uh, its, uh, his rights uh, justly and fairly. And this uh, project has been uh, uh, discussing for uh, some time. And we are looking forward to be achieved uh, to to, for us to prevent uh, this conflict uh, that is bleeding uh, continuously every day. Also, we will never be comfortable while we see the killing of civilians 
And also we will never feel comfortable and relieved to see this question, this issue that can be solved when we uh, put in front of our eyes the benefit uh, and interest of everyone and we give the wisdom and be away and keep away from any uh, other discussions that will may cause more a divide and conflict. I think that the extend or extending an expansion of this issue uh, will increase the bleeding and uh, the bloodshed and everybody will suffer from it and a, a lot of people will try to take uh, a credit for it and I there is no doubt that there is some people from all parties uh, are trying to gain benefit from the uh, prolonging of this issue. However, those who have uh, a live conscientious, they always seek to uh, prevent and uh, end all conflicts. And we hope uh, that to happen soon. Thank you. Um, if you look on your website, the website of the Muslim World League, uh, I saw recently that you did issue a statement about a very important political event. You condemned the chemical weapons attack by the Syrian regime in Douma calling it a war crime and a crime against humanity. Why did you do that? Yes. There's no doubt that this incident is a criminal one. And uh, it's uh, uh, called under the international criminal law is a genocide. Uh, these uh, chemical weapons uh, that have been used against uh, children uh, can be described as a bad uh, point in history and um, the international justice systems should uh, stand fiercely in front and uh, before these uh, um, crimes because uh, it brings shame to all. Very good. Thank you. L let's talk about for a moment about the Muslim World League itself, about uh, the Rabita. Uh, there is a great competition to be the source of authority for Muslims around the world, especially for young Muslims. What does the Muslim World League offer young Muslims today? In other words, why should young Muslims listen to you? Our league directs its message to the young youth, Muslim youth, and uh, also to all people, even uh, those who are not young. Of course, we focus on the youth because they, they are uh, the, f the future uh, of our societies. We also direct our messages to the non-Muslims, young as well as old. Our message is an international one, and it focuses on working to uh, give people the, 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 the truth uh, about Islam, uh, Islam that uh, believes in coexistence and uh, is also uh, 
uh, the message of our league is uh, facing the messages that are put by the uh, those extremists, regardless of where they come from, uh, whether from inside Islamic countries or from outside uh, non-Muslim countries. There are voices of hate that uh, are being made by uh, those people who are supposed to be Muslims and also from uh, extremists that are not Muslims all over the world. Uh, this extremist mother from Muslims or non-Muslims, we do not want voices of hate. There are theories about hate uh, that are being talked about by some intellectuals and they are trying to uh, establish this theory and uh, they are trying to enforce the idea that uh, humanity is in a continuous struggle. We are against this. God did not uh, uh, create all these people in order to have uh, them in a struggle. Uh, God cannot uh, uh, order people to do something that is impossible and cannot be achieved. Uh, humans have their own religious uh, beliefs uh, and his intellectual uh, ideas and his civilizational uh, ideas and his social and political and economic ideas. But they must he must understand the convictions of others and he doesn't have to believe in it or understand it. Uh, only then we can have enough uh, 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 conscious. I mean, we respect others. Uh, we actually respect ourselves and we make the others respect us. The uh, racism and the hate and the rejection of the other and uh, elimination of the other. These are methods that were tried uh, uh, people uh, throughout human history and did not produce anything other than wars and destructions, uh, armed wars or uh, cold wars. Dr. Mohammed, I think you I think you know, Dr. Mohammed, that critics critics have accused the Muslim World League of supporting institutions, mosques, madrasas, that have not taught the sort of moderate Islam that you advocate, but rather an intolerant version. Uh, it wasn't too long ago that the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia actually said, we've succeeded to a large extent in reducing extremism in our religious institutions. We used to have about 60% extremists, 40% moderates. Now we have just 10% extremists. And the rest are moderate, open-minded, enlightened people. So what can you say about what the organization has done in the past and what it is supporting now? And is it accurate to say that the League no longer funds any institution or school that advocates extremist Islam? Uh, the Islamic World League is an uh, uh, international organi organization that uh, gathers uh, different uh, Muslim nations and also communicate with uh, non-Muslim nations for the purposes of uh, cooperation to achieve uh, the common ideas and principles that we all look forward to achieve. Uh, the most important of which is uh, peace and um, 
uh, harmony and a spread of uh, tolerance and love and understand uh, the God's uh, will and a diverse, uh, diversity. Uh, the uh, Islamic World League uh, is a very strong league uh, that has a very um, uh, is very respected. Uh, it, once the league speaks, the Muslim world listens. For many factors, the first of which, because it is the international uh, league uh, that gathers the Muslim nations uh, for the past 60 years. And because it speaks to the Muslim nation from uh, the Qibla of Muslims in Mecca, and uh, when it speaks, we s they say uh, Mecca uh, speaks. And also its uh, highest uh, supreme council, it has 16 uh, Muslim scholars, one uh, uh, from the Muslim nations. Also, uh, in that uh, Supreme Council, we have uh, uh, um, previous or former uh, um, leaders from the Muslim nations. When this league uh, speaks or uh, goes to any of these uh, uh, nations and e these any of these countries, uh, it is received in a very nice uh, way and uh, through the leaders and kings of those countries. And it is also welcomed and appreciated in most of the non-Muslim countries. The Islamic World League is very important, and of course this will put more a burden and responsibility on our shoulders. Uh, I will uh, mention an example. When we talked uh, in uh, the anniversary of Holocaust, and we uh, pub published our um, statement, to our, our letter to the director of the museum, um, Ms. Sarah. I received many uh, of uh, support, uh, letters of support from the uh, Islamic nations, uh, and we did never received uh, not even one letter uh, that was uh, blaming or uh, sad about what we've done, because we all know that uh, the, this league, when it speaks, it, it speaks about uh, or it speaks um, about some information and a good amount of conviction, and it does not come up with its speech um, uh, on the spot. And the same applies to its ideas as well. Uh, uh, fighting the extremist ideas uh, bring us back to the reality of Islam. This religion, uh, that if it was not uh, tolerant and uh, uh, coexistent with uh, uh, other religions, it would have been diminished in the f its first uh, century. This is uh, the way God created uh, things. For all those uh, the, uh, who um, uh, fight against things, uh, they uh, diminished. They cannot survive uh, for the uh, 1400 years, uh, and uh, for the past 1400 years, it become more stronger and uh, has more presence. We learned uh, through Islam, and uh, we studied uh, the uh, religious scriptures, and uh, we are uh, Muslim scholars, and we believe these uh, in these ideas with all our conviction, uh, with. Um, uh, background of these uh, scriptures, uh, and we understand it the way it should be understood.
Very good. Thank you. So I have uh, two more questions, Dr. Mohammed. You are here in Washington. You are a faith leader in a very political city. Is there a useful role you would like to see the United States play in countering extremism? Is there a role for the United States government in fighting against extremism? Or is this something that we should leave to people like you and to Muslim religious institutions? Is it only a matter of faith or is there also a role for government? Yes. Uh, uh, America and other non-Islamic states have a big role, especially America, because of its size and its power and its influence in the world and its weight in the world, and also the fact that it is uh, it is a, a country with a big civilization. This role for the United States cannot be uh, through interpreting the religious text. Uh, America will teach us uh, how to interpret our own uh, uh, religious. These things have to happen from the, our uh, country journey. That is logic. But it is, it is uh, required from the non-Muslim countries, and America specifically, to f confront all to the voices of extremism that uh, uh, manages this uh, hate and that supports this hate and supports these terrorist organizations that are benefiting from these hate voices or voices of hate. The first uh, uh, of those who welcome Islamophobia and those who praise Islamophobia is Daesh because it, uh, it will have more followers uh, in the face of this uh, because therefore the voices of hate against Islam or against religions in general Islamophobia Islamophobia or religion, religious phobia. These are things that uh, should be rejected. We must respect the ideas of others. And if they make mistakes, or some of the followers of one religion, I cannot uh, blame the religion for that mistake. There, uh, throughout history, there were uh, issues that were uh, raised uh, in the name of God and led to a bloodshed. And they were uh, crimes, human crimes committed that uh, had actually political goals. And the God uh, dislikes Totally. And uh, everybody condemns it. But when, when it raised the, the banner, uh, the uh, flag of uh, God, when uh, 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 this was really false, how many people were killed uh, in the name of this, uh, and in the name of confronting the religious text and uh, enlightenment was uh, 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 prevented in the name of religion and the real religion is innocent of all of this there were wars you, you know it throughout history in the east and in the west Blood shed and millions were killed under the banner of religion. 
for these wars? Well, did the, cre the creator call for it, as those who falsified facts say? So we must not blame religion, and not attack religion, not fear religion. If some of the followers of the religion uh, falsified the texts of their of scriptures, we are fighting people, not ideas. Just on your last thought, given that you had said how many innocent people died because of religion, would you be willing to share a, a document with a Christian leader, with a Jewish leader, with leaders of other religions that say no, no to killing in the name of God, that there is no justification for killing in the name of God. Would you be willing to support a statement that rejects all, all killing in the name of God? What do you mean? <laughs> what I mean is, as you said, there are, there are extremists. There are extremists in Muslim faith, extremists in other faiths, who cite God as their reason for killing. Would you be willing to say no? If you have a political dispute, that's one thing. But God is not the reason for killing. Uh, the shortest way to convict to convince people is through the spiritual path. A lot of people, I don't want to say the most, but some of them are religious or at least respect religions. Therefore, if uh, the politician who doesn't have any moralities and ethics uh, uh, if he has uh, some political project and he can um, uh, use uh, religion to um, reach his ends or to overcome these obstacles, he, we will never hesitate to use a propaganda to influence the minds. Hitler uh, used uh, propaganda. Uh, of course, uh, there was uh, in the other end the use of religion and to achieve uh, political ends and uh, gains and also material ones. Uh, there is a saying that says that religion is like an eagle or falcon. Whoever let it go wins it. Therefore, some uh, politicians or those uh, who are material uh, materialists, they uh, send uh, these messages um, to, that are convincing to the brain, to the mind, to the heart, according to the International or the Islamic World League uh, through the uh, human history as of, uh, as of the um, religions has been documented to this date that 70% of the uh, human wars uh, religions has been, have been used during these wars. And of course, uh, it is a very large number, it's worrisome, and it's gruesome. Those who have uh, political aims and the religion is uh, free and innocent from that uh, objective, we have to say, please do not exploit religion. And we have to say it 
and his face, regardless of his position, whether it was uh, ISIS, uh, Al Qaeda, any extremist uh, who's using uh, uh, religion as an excuse. Also, there's a lot of uh, slogans that become more sectarian, uh, sectarianism. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people, they don't have um, religion, and they become um, re any religion. Once they once in, went into uh, politi politics, they uh, used it, and people clap for them, and they applaud them. And uh, they speak in the international forums using uh, religion uh, slogans. Very good. Thank you. So just finally, Dr. Elisa, um, when, you, when you complete your service as head of the Muslim World League, what would you like to be able to say to your four children that you accomplished? What would you like to be able to say to your children that was your greatest achievement as head of this global Muslim organization? If I am able to achieve my goal in, in achieving uh, the, uh, the peace and uh, coexistence uh, internationally through the authorities that we have through this uh, uh, league, uh, and then I will be very happy and proud. Be, uh, be, uh, and I will be very hap happy to uh, for uh, this achievement if this is achieved, and I think that that is uh, uh, what every human being would uh, be able uh, wish to do. My own goal is to to remove or end hate uh, and. Uh, discrimination, make people live in peace, and all of us uh, uh, reads and knows what is happening, and he uh, selects uh, whatever he wants, or what uh, he believes in, and he is responsible for his own decision. But we should not fight each other. There should not be a hate between us. We must respect the others, uh, respect their dignity, uh, respect their uh, freedom. The, uh, the uh, justice must prevail, uh, truth must prevail. This is the greatest gain that uh, we can wish for and each person we could wish for in this world. Uh, peace, coexistence. Assalam. Peace, coexistence, respect and dignity. Dr. Muhammad Elisa, thank you very much for joining us at the Washington Institute. <laughs> Friends, <laughs> Friends, that concludes tonight's dinner of our Barbie Weinberg annual conference, our Founders Conference. Please be sure to leave your, your translations, your interpretation kit on your table. And thank you very much for joining us tonight. Tomorrow, a hearing on